AMD's version of frame generation is out in a preview build for RX 7000 series Radeon GPUs. It's called AMD Fluid Motion Frames or AFMF, FMF. A lot of people will just refer to it as FSR3 frame generation. I think it's one of the most exciting things to occur in gaming for a really long time. And it's something that's going to potentially change how gamers decide on what GPUs to buy in the future. So, so I think it's important to know what it is, how it works, and if it's going to affect the games you play. So the way I think of it, all motion that we see on screens is just a bunch of images shown very quickly in succession. The more images we see, the smoother the motion seems and maybe more realistic it can seem. Sometimes too many frames can look unnatural, but I kind of like that, but that's a different topic. Anyways, the way that frame generation and fluid motion frames work is like this. Let's imagine the output is like a flipbook of pictures and it's 100 pages for this example. So enabling frame generation or fluid motion frames is like giving an artist that flipbook and that artist is able to add pages in between the existing 100 pages and maybe make it 150 pages so that it looks a little smoother. NVIDIA and AMD use different methods to achieve that, but that's basically what they're doing. It's a lot like how our 120 hertz TVs work if you have one. The TV signal it gets is going to be at 60 hertz, and it basically doubles the frames when you have motion smoothing or that 120 hertz mode turned on, giving that ultra smooth or almost soap opera like motion look. But in the end, that input is at 60 hertz. Similarly, with fluid motion frames here, when the source output doesn't reach at least around 60 FPS, it doesn't really provide much of a visual benefit, which is what it's designed for. Which brings me to my next topic of discussion, which is what types of games should you use FMF on? And you can see that I'm testing it in a single player game here, Cyberpunk, and I tested it in Red Dead Redemption 2 earlier, which is another single player title. As I mentioned earlier, it's kind of artificially implanting frames so that the visual output is smoother but you're not actually affecting the performance of the source input. It's almost like post-processing it. So in games where latency and response time are very important, like multiplayer games, or if you're just sensitive to input lag and things like that, then it might not be for you. But for me, in single player games where immersion is a big factor, I like to use it and I think it makes a big difference. So I messed around with some different settings to see where it would actually be useful for me. With the XTX, unfortunately, it still looks like path tracing is not really usable, even with FMF on an XTX in 4K, which is what I was hoping for. That's not a reality yet. Kind of expected, as it's one of NVIDIA's signature features at the moment. So even with ray tracing, it wasn't something that I ended up wanting to use. When I turned off ray tracing, I think this is where it becomes useful for Cyberpunk in 4K with the next TX. So that's what I have side by side here. This is Cyberpunk 2.0, the Phantom Liberty in 4K using ultra settings, no ray tracing, with fluid motion frames off on the left and on on the right. So I'll drop off here, let you watch the rest of the footage. As always, thanks for dropping by and helping me support my dream here. I appreciate all the likes and views and comments. The Purology community is really growing with a lot of great people and it's just really been a joy to be a part of. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.
So, can I go? You need to dress it down too? Piss off! Back to 